All right, now in the past, I've shown you how a cotton picker works, but that's only part of the equation of getting this cotton out here into a marketable commodity. You know, the cotton picker harvests the cotton, but what it harvests, we can't sell yet. So in this video, I'm gonna show you how a cotton gin works. Once the seed cotton is harvested, to put it in a marketable commodity, the seed must then be separated from the fiber. And then to do that process, we take our cotton to the cotton gin. Well, today we are on our way to Farmer's Gin of Humboldt where we get our cotton gin to meet with James Wages. He's going to show us all about the process of ginning cotton. We've actually been ginning our cotton over here at Farmer's Gin of Humboldt ever since uh, 1996, the year after we closed down our family operated cotton gin that had been in production since 1882. So we've been ginning cotton over here for approximately uh, 25 years or so. All right, here we are with James Wages today. Uh, he's going to walk us through the cotton gin and show us all about the, the cotton ginning process. I'm James Wages with Farmer's Gin of Humboldt. I'm um, one of the manager and one of the owners here. Uh, this operation's been here we think there's been a gin here on this location since the early 1940s. Uh, this building here has been here since the early 60s. Old building with a lot of new technology in it. And uh, we gin about, uh, average about 35,000 bales a year. The acres go up and down each year, so it changes the number of bales that we gin a year. Most of our cotton comes from Gibson County, North Madison County, and a little bit out of Crockett County. Our farthest haul of cotton is, uh, is probably about 40 miles. Uh, most of the cotton is within 20 to 25 miles radius of the gin. We service around 12 to 15 growers a year. So this is the module feeder. Uh, we bring the modules in on a module truck. We back up to the feeder and uh, unload it on the unloading bed. If they're rectangular modules, they just go all the way up through the head and this machine's tearing the modules apart and uh, feeding them into the gin at a, at a certain rate, depending on how fast we're ginning. The machine here at the middle of the bed, if we're doing rounds, this is where we cut the plastic and remove the plastic off of the rounds. After we tear the module apart, it goes onto a belt underneath the feeder and we induce heat to uh, help dry the, dry the cotton as we're bringing it into the gin. A rectangular module uh, average about 15 bales uh, per rectangular module. And then the round bales usually average around 3.8 to four bales per round. The turnout on that cotton would be about 40% lint. And then the seed and the trash will make up the other 60% uh, of the what's in the module. So after the cotton goes through the module feeder, we bring it into the gin with air and then add more heat to it. The temperature is automatically controlled with, by PLCs. We put the heat on it based on how wet the cotton is. If the cotton doesn't need heat, we don't add heat. The heat helps to uh, dry the lint down and the trash, so it makes the trash remove from the cotton easier. Goes through an incline cylinder cleaner and then it drops into a stick machine where we remove the burrs and the sticks. We drop it into hot air again for the third stage of drying. And then it goes through another two set of inclines and that's where we remove a lot of the leaf trash. Once it goes through the inclines, it goes into the conveyor distributor into the feeders, which are above the gin stands. 
the feeders actually clean the cotton and meter how much cotton is going into each gin stand. And then once the cotton hits the gin stand, it goes into <clears throat> these saws are running between ribs. The saws pull the fiber through the ribs and the seed are too large to go through the ribs. So the seed fall down and go into an auger to where we blow it into either a seed storage house or we blow it into an overhead storage house to where we can load trucks out. This gin is a three stand plant. Uh, the capacity on this gin, uh, with the three stands we could do more, but our overhead, which is the cleaning equipment, kind of determines our capacity, but we can run about 36 to 37 bales per hour. So in 2020, uh, we had to do an electric upgrade on the gin. We were running out of power on our three-phase side. The transformers wasn't quite large enough, so we had to put them in a bigger transformer. In doing that, we upgraded all our electric. Uh, everything now in the gin is PLC controlled. That's what these touch screens, that's the operator interface. We can push one button, the whole gin will crank up. These screens over here, they're all to do with controlling the, uh, the moisture in the cotton and how much drying we're putting on the cotton. And then they control the moisture that we put back into the bale or to the lint before we put it into a bale. We restore moisture mainly to help the press. It makes the cotton press easier. And uh, then it's a little bit of added value back to the grower. By putting heat on the, on the fibers, it helps remove, it doesn't really expand the fibers, but it helps remove the leaf trash from the fibers. It's kind of like a wet sponge. You know, it's easier to get dirt out of a dry sponge than it is a wet sponge. So the electric cost, uh, we, our electric cost runs about seventy to $80,000 every month that we're running around the clock. If we're running 24 hours a day, seven days a week. Gas cost on a normal year uh, runs about $1.25 per bale. Uh, the electric cost, I think, figures somewhere around, somewhere between $4.50 and $5 a bale. These are our lint cleaners. We run Moss lint cleaners behind the Continental stands. These are called, uh, super, most people call them super mosses. We actually split the cotton coming out of the stand into, into two cleaners so we can run the capacities that we need to run. On these two lines, we run it through two stages of lint cleaning and uh, before it goes into the, the battery condenser. Over here on this line, we run a super jet, which is in front of this machine. And then uh, this is called a Sentinel lint cleaner that's behind the 170 gin stand. This cleaner here, it's a little bit newer design. It has no feed works in it. There's been some research done that they think the feed works is where we're getting some of the fiber damage uh, in the ginning line. And so this lint cleaner is supposed to, supposed to eliminate some of that fiber damage. Up here we have a condenser. This is where we're removing the air from the lint. Uh, the lint comes down and it's fed through a feed bar. And there's a, there's a saw in here that has some really tiny teeth on it that grab a hold of the lint and then sling it across a grid bar and centrifugal force throws the trash out and then the lint is doffed off with a brush and put into the lint flue. So after the seeds removed from the from the lint it goes into this auger and uh, falls down into a vacuum and uh, we pick it up with air. Uh, we have a blower that pushes the seed either into the flat storage house or into the overhead storage house. For every bale of cotton we gin, we get about 590 pounds of seed. Once the uh, lint goes through the lint cleaners, we bring it, bring all the lint together into one pipe, and it goes up into a battery condenser. The battery condenser forms it into a bat that's 52 inches wide, comes down the lint slide, and on the lint slide, that's where we add moisture back to the lint. It comes down into this box on the press. It's, uh, we have a tramper that tramps the cotton into the box. Once the tramper reaches a certain hydraulic pressure, 
The press knows that it's full. The boxes pick up, turn, and sit back down. Then a 10 inch ram comes down and presses the, presses the bale. Takes about, uh, on, a, on a good bale that's, that's got good moisture, it takes about 4,800 PSI to press a bale. Once the bale is pressed, the, uh, the strapper comes up and uh, straps the bale. Every bale averages about 490 pounds. So on the bagging process, once we've pressed the bale and strapped it, uh, it goes into the bagger. And the, uh, we pull a sample off of each side of the bale so we get a uniform sample and that's what the USDA requires, is a sample from each side of the bale. Once the sample's taken, it's pushed through the bagger and the bag is formed around the bale. Once it goes through the bagging process, then it goes on to a scale where we weigh the bale and that's entered into the computer. And then it gets a PBI, which is a permanent bale identification tag. And that tag stays with the bale until it ends up at the mill. The tag number is barcoded, and then that's how we put them into the warehouse in numerical order. The sampling process, we do that in order to determine the grade of the cotton based on the color, the staple length, the air, which is the fineness of the fiber, and uh, the leaf content, which is the trash. So here we have the moat press. Uh, so this cotton, it comes off of the lint cleaning process. It's the nips that come out of the fibers, which are little short wadded up fibers that, that never formed into a seed. Uh, the moat cotton is generally used in uh, like mop yarn and, and some other industries that, that don't need the long fibers. Generally, you get a moat bale about every 40 to 50 bales of cotton that we gin. So this is a, where it's pressed, and it's just a continuous process. So here we are in the warehouse where we bring the cotton after the, after the ginning process. The bales are put in in numerical order, and they're put into rows and then into blocks. Uh, every bale has a location based on the row and the block number and we use a computer system to track wherever bale is. Uh, we use the barcodes in the computer system. Once the cotton is sold by the grower, the, uh, the merchant will send a, uh, a order for the, uh, for the bales that they have bought, and then we'll use the computer program to pull a pick list, and then it tells us wherever bale is, and we pull those bales out and put them, group them together with that particular order. When the buyer orders the bales, we may have, <clears throat> there may be only two bales in this block. We have to tear the whole block down and pull those two bales out and put the whole stack back in. Because the buyers are looking for a certain quality of fiber, uh, maybe less trash, more trash, uh, then, and they may want a certain color that they, that they want out of that bale. Here at Humboldt, uh, we, we can store about, uh, right now we're licensed for 52,000 with the warehouses that we have. Uh, you have to have a, uh, you have to be licensed through the USDA to store the cotton if you're going to put it into the loan. We work on pulling the cotton out all year long. Uh, we hope to have the cotton out, you know, by the, by the next growing season. And the cotton moves out, it, it may move out fast one year, 
based on how the cotton sold and then one year it may be kind of slow about coming out of the warehouses. Uh, it just depends on where the cotton market is and how it's sold and marketed. A lot of the cotton here uh, goes overseas, a lot goes to China, and then some of it does go to domestic mills here in the United States. All right guys, well that's going to do it for this video. We've shown all about the, the cotton ginning process and uh, going along with our other video on how a cotton picker works. Now you know how cotton is grown, how it's harvested, how it's ginned, and well, what, what whatever happens to it uh, after this process is out of my expertise, so I really can't help you with that, but I hope you've enjoyed this video. Thanks for watching. We'll be back again soon.